Happy solstice. I have to tell you, I love the winter solstice of every holiday in the entire year. It's probably my very favorite. I love it especially because I live in Minnesota. And I love the idea that even as we turn into January and February, which are truly the hardest months of the year here weather-wise, we're already bringing back the light. That in fact, the light is diminishing through November and December, a time when actually it's kind of cozy. But about the time that we feel stir crazy here, that we think we can't bear to kick another icky clump off of our car, we say, wait a minute, wait, but I know the light is returning. There's a minute more light today than there was yesterday. It wasn't until I lived in Minnesota that the winter solstice really meant something to me. And I have friends who celebrate it all over the world in different climates. And I know that it's a different celebration depending where you are. I have a friend in San Francisco who always goes into the ocean on the winter solstice because she gets really cold and then comes back up and it kind of takes her breath away. And then that cold brings back her life and she starts anew. They say that the solstice is, you know, when you inhale and then there's that little pause and then you exhale. Wait a minute, I'm going to do that now. That that little pause is the moment of turning. They say that the phrase a year and a day relates to the winter solstice, that it's the day of turning. And I love that. I began celebrating the solstice years ago when the commercialization of Christmas depressed me, when I didn't enjoy that winter holiday, and I claimed this one for my own. And one thing I loved about it was it was kind of culturally invisible. Everybody didn't start dragging up all their solstice stuff and putting it out in October. It wasn't done to death. It felt fresh and my own. As I learned more about it, I was really tickled to find out how many of what we consider Christian traditions actually come from the winter solstice, whether it's evergreens, whether it's lights, whether it's the celebration of new life, rather than the sun, S-O-N, being born. It was about the rebirth of the sun, S-U-N. And I just kind of loved claiming my own holiday that way. For me, the other solstices and equinoxes aren't as profound, although the spring equinox is a sign also in Minnesota that hope is on its way because by March, it's still winter here. And knowing that it's spring, even though it might not feel like spring, is also very life-giving. There's something so comforting about being part of that cycle that has nothing to do with humanity in a way, isn't there? I mean, I just love aligning myself as an earthling. There's something so simple about it. And as we talk about signs and wonders, that doesn't seem wondrous to be a person of the earth, but isn't it really the ultimate wonder that we were born at all? That we are on a planet that can sustain human life? That I can stand here around so many human-made things which have evolved over thousands of years, that we can be part of a world full of things we don't understand. Animal life, cellular life, how the stars move, why the Earth stays in its orbit. And there we are, part of it. To me, the solstice is a time of deep wonder, deep gratitude, and deep connection to the larger world. Happy solstice to you wherever you are, whether you're north or south, whether it's hot or cold, whether it's a time of hibernation or a time of charging out into the world, whatever's going on for you, I'm so delighted to be spinning on this planet with you, to be turning on this earth with you, and to be turning always, no matter how it feels, towards the light.